Oh, I've loved it. I've loved it, and I hope you do more of them. Um, I just find the talks inspirational. It makes it, it. It sort of reinforces everything that I believe, and uh, it makes me go away thinking anything's possible. That anything's possible. You know that if you have the right mindset, you can achieve really what you want to achieve. That you shouldn't let anything stop you. Um, your thoughts create your life, your master of your own destiny, and, and you reinforce all this stuff, together with the talk on nutrition and exercise, which is so important. What would you say your biggest breakthrough was or has been throughout the day? My big breakthrough? Um, I think, well, just as I say, believing that I can go away from here. Um, and if I have a dream, make it happen using the tools that you give. And would you like to share your story with us about... Well, I have a few stories, <laughs> but this is another one. I, when I was um, upstairs, I'd remembered. As I was saying earlier, I spent the summer um, on the Isle of Man, and I had to drive from Leeds with my car pretty packed with stuff to get there. And on the M62 motorway, this was early May, I felt it juddering a bit. And I said a silent prayer, just please get me to Liverpool to the ferry. I've got to get on that ferry. And I did. And when I got to the Isle of Man, I contacted a local garage and they said, could I bring the car in? Um, which I did. And they said they'd look at it and could I go back? And I went back after a couple of days and they said, it's bad news. Your car's not roadworthy. And I was absolutely shocked because I thought, well, it's only done 45,000 miles. I know it's 10 years old, but I've looked after it. So how can it not be roadworthy? Well, he said, it's not roadworthy. Well, I said, what are you talking about? You know, what costs? He said, well, I'd have to send to Japan for new parts. It's going, I'd be looking between the region of 1,500 and 2,000 pounds. And I'm saying, for a 10-year-old car, this is ridiculous. I don't have this sort of money. Anyhow, he said, well, that's the way it is. Um, I said, I need to think about this and take the car. He said, well, if you take the car, I need you to sign a disclaimer because I've said it's not roadworthy. And I thought, well, I'm going to get this car away from here, whatever. So I literally freewheeled it back almost to where I was living at staying. And then I thought, where am I going to take it? So I contacted another garage. He was incredibly slow. Oh, it needs this part, it needs that part. Oh, I'll have to order them. And I kept chasing him up. And this was going on over a month, chasing this man up, nothing. So in the end, I thought, I don't know what to do. Um, am I going to have to scrap the car? You know, I can't take it back if it's not roadworthy. And, all. and this particular day, I had to go into the main town. And it was, I decided to walk a particular route through woodland. And I wa was walking down through the woods and there was a guy walking towards me with a young son, a toddler, and I stopped to s admire the baby really, because I love kids, and got talking to this man and he said, I'm actually on my way to collect my car. And I said, oh, which garage? And he told me the name of the garage. I said, I've never heard of them. And he said, well, I work for the government and we do a survey of garages on the island and this is the top one. He said, why don't you turn around? If I don't, he said, I don't know where you're going, but have you got time to turn around and go and see them and tell them you've talked to me? So I went to the garage. I had an hour and a half, because I was working, so I had an hour and a half to spare. I went back to the garage, saw this lovely guy, and I told him the tale. He said, can you get your car into me now? Well, I wasn't too far away. Drove the car down. By that evening, I went to work got back to the garage, he had it on the ramp, he said, I've taken it for a run, I've already fixed a hole in the exhaust. Well, I said, is it roadworthy? He said, of course it's roadworthy. I've seen far worse coming in here. He fixed my car and he charged me £400. And I, I thought to myself, I was telling upstairs, I said, if I hadn't, if I hadn't done that walk that day and talked to that man on the path, I would never have known about that garage. I might have even scrapped my car over there. So I have my car and it's fixed. Yeah. It was pure, well, whatever, the universe. Because I kept 
I suppose saying, I was saying out loud, what on earth am I going to do with my car? What am I going to do? I can't go back with no car. I've got stuff to take back.